Uh, for this examination, I'm going to be demonstrating the Parkinson's exam. Uh, as always, you always start off by introducing yourself, washing your hands, and then making sure the patient's stable. Uh, moving on, uh, I always ask for a set of vitals. Uh, and in terms of vitals, things that you can look for uh, is ortho orthostatic hypotension. So I'd also uh, include uh, getting your orthostatic uh, vitals as well. Uh, on to general inspection, uh, just looking at the patient, uh, you may note mass facies. Uh, so this is a lack of expression in their face. Uh, um, and then you can also see a scared facies as well, which is a, a, an anxious kind of surprised look uh, that they might have as well. Uh, looking at the face as well, you might note uh, a decreased blinking reflex. Uh, so an average person will blink uh, approximately uh, 25 times, plus or minus 14. Uh, so it would be reduced from that. Uh, you could note that the person uh, has uh, drooling as well. And then you could ask them to talk during, uh, so you could just say, um, is, this is Wednesday. This is Wednesday. And you'll note that their, their speech can be slowed, uh, and then there'll also be uh, hypophonia, or quite uh, uh, quiet speech. Uh, moving on to a special test uh, within uh, the face would be the glabellar test. Uh, so I'm just going to tap on the top of your forehead. Uh, and so you just tap in the glabellar region right here. And as you tap, uh, at first they'll start to blink. Um, but as you continue, the blinking should become extinguished. Uh, it, it normally becomes extinguished in five to ten times, so if it persists past that, that would be a positive finding that's highly suggestive of Parkinson's. Uh, another thing that you can also test for in the face would actually be the extraocular eye movements, um, and this would be specifically looking for a progressive supraventricular palsy as well, or PSP. Uh, and so I'll just get through the following. And the big thing you want to do is mainly up and down that will actually have the person's left neck. Um, and, so, and so for this examination, it's not all that way. Uh, what would be an abnormal sign? It would be a lack of uh, being able to look up and down or a uh, decreased kind of motion from that either. Um, moving on from there, uh, I like to split up the Parkinson's uh, examination into the four cardinal findings. Um, and so I use the acronym TRAP. Uh, so T is for tremor. R is for rigidity, A is for akinesis or bradykinesia, uh, and then P is for postural instability. So in terms of the tremor, uh, things that uh, I, I just, I would ask them to just rest it on the leg. And just so you know, it's a, it's a resting tremor that you'll see. Uh, it's, um, it's a fine tremor that's four to six hertz. Um, and it's often described as a pill rolling kind of tremor. Uh, it's normally seen uh, mainly in the extremities, uh, and then as the disease progresses, you might see it further and further progress upwards. Uh, other things to note is that in uh, as persons with general Parkinson's, uh, it should be asymmetric in the development. Um, if it does develop uh, symmetrically, that would be more suggestive of some kind of uh, Parkinson's plus disorder. Uh, things with the, the tremor, additional things to note. Um, so uh, because it's a resting tremor, any kind of intention will actually extinguish it. Uh, it will get worse with uh, any kind of emotional distress, or if you get them to move. So maybe with the other hand, if you could just move your hand up and down like this, you might note that the tremor gets worse uh, on the other side. Um, moving on from there is the rigidity. Uh, so the rigidity kind of has it has two features. Uh, first uh, is the lead pipe rigidity, and so that's just the increased tone. And uh, and then after that, there's also a cogwheel rigidity, which is a superimposed um, increased tone on top of the tremor that you actually feel. And so as you're moving, I start at the wrist first, and you'll see, and it'll have like a step off kind of uh, movement as you're going. Um, and then you can also do it in the elbows as well. Things that you should note too is that um, there shouldn't be any kind of spasticity as well with this. It's just an increased tone and then the cogwheel rigidity on top of that. From there, uh, examining for the akinesia or bradykinesia. Um, one thing that you can do is you could get them to, to write on a piece of paper. I don't have that available right now, but I would ask them to write uh, their name or write a sentence. Um, and you'll note that the, the writing becomes quite small. Um, uh, and micrographia is the, the term for that. Uh, so that'd be a special test that I could go on, but I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, in terms of uh, the bradykinesia, uh, things to note, it's both a decreased amplitude and a decreased speed. So with any movements that you're doing, you're going to ask them to do full range of motions as fast as they can. So I start off with just a finger tap onto um, their 
basically, and I just get them with one finger, just as quiet as you can, as fast as you can, and I do that on the other side as well. And again, you're always looking for asymmetry. Uh, and then you can do with your fingers, tapping, or you can do like this with your hand as well, or you can do like that. And then I also like to examine the lower extremity as well, so to do that, I'll just get you to tap it deeply. And again, I would do this bilaterally as well, just comparing the two sides. Uh, last part of the examination uh, is uh, postural instability. Uh, so first thing I was going to get them to do is if I could just get you to stand up. And then I, and I'll ask them to just walk forward and then turn around and walk back. And so on the postural instability and things you're noting with the gait, uh, first of all, they often have a stoop posture. Their necks flex forward. Um, their hands, when they're walking, will actually have very decreased range of motion and it's quite stiff. Uh, and then they walk with a shuffling gait or fest and festination. So it's hard for them to get going, but once they get going, it's hard for them to stop as well. Uh, last thing, when they're turning, they actually do turning on block, um, which is uh, turning on one foot. Um, and that's just to help with their stability. The last part of the examination that has been uh, officially eliminated, but I still like to demonstrate it uh, uh, just for sakes. The reason it's eliminated is it's a little bit dangerous, uh, so they don't recommend you actually doing this on a patient, um, but it's actually testing the postural instability uh, portion. Um, so I just tell the patient, I'm just gonna be pulling you backwards. And when you do this examination, normally you would do this um, uh, next to a wall. So in case the patient does fall into you, at least you'll fall into the wall instead of falling backwards. What I do is I get them to just step back, or I pull them backwards just randomly, and I see how they recover. So, and you'll note this person um, just takes takes one step backwards. Um, any more than one step backwards is a positive test for that. Um, and that concludes the end of my Parkinson's exam.